Hello, fight lovers. Welcome to Met Sports TV. I'm here to bring you the aftermath and all the news and all the controversies that has happened with, uh, after the Wilder versus Fury two fights that on February 22nd, just before the lockdown and isolation. But please remember, the COVID-19 obey all protocols by help by the health personnel and obey authorities of various countries. Thank you. The first news after after Tyson Fury technically won the bout on February 22nd was, um, we all know that uh, Wilder has two trainers, JDS and McBrillian. JDS is the head coach and McBrillian is the assistant. But McBrillian is a former two-time world champion but the DS has learned he's not he's not a former boxer so McBrillian does more of the boxing so McBrillian took threw in the towel in the seventh round having first in the first few minutes of the round consulted with JDS and JDS told him no but later as a former fighter and someone who has taken losses he knew that Wilder was going through a lot of punishment as the saying goes he who fights and run away leaves to fight another day. So McBrillian taught it twice to throw in the towel to save the life of his fighter. I think that was genuine. He loved Wilder so much. He loved his family too so much. He did not want him to go home broken. And if a fighter, if you are beaten so many times over and over again, your, your spirit and your confidence get broken. So McBrillian did not want that, so he threw in the towel. JDS threw him under the bus. It was alleged that McBrillian was crying. He wasn't allowed into the dressing room. But truth be told, he did a brilliant job. He saved the life of Deontay Wilder. Wilder happened to, uh, to have granted an interview after the fight that something went off with that excuse. Then he said he wanted to go out on his shield. Wada has already stated earlier that he wanted a body on, on his record, but we don't want his body on our record. We need him alive to keep the, the WH very excited, so we wanted him alive. Then the second controversy happened when he was having an interview with TMZ Sports, when he said he, Wada, uh, I think um, the, the week of the fight was was um, black history man so Wada wore this black huge costume in which he was entering the ring with he claims it, it weighs 400 pounds but Wada had already said in an interview with Joe that he always trained with with a gear weighing about 45 pounds always he said and that's that can be in the video so watch it what i said he always trained with a with an additional costume weighing 45 pounds so what happened to for a ring walk and i think he made the mistake of a lot of his, his life because he would have already tried the costume the costume that cost over 150 dollars he would have already tried it and know how he felt in it so he should have realized the day before that, no, this is not good for me. Especially from the dressing room to the ring, it will take minutes. So he should have realized that this will put pressure on his leg. Then the next controversy was the glove gates. The glove gates controversy. The glove gate was started by, by a guy who I think uh, it's he he he's not into sports channel but he's more into the spiritual uh, heritage stuff he started the glove gate saying tyson fury because he he was flipping his job he was flipping the job uh, tyson fury's wrist was not in the job it's not possible if tyson fury's wrist was not in the job it would be harmful to him that means he was hitting Wilder with, with this part of the knuckle. It's not possible. It's not possible to hit someone here and and with with your fist at the at the bottom of the glove. It's not possible. You end up breaking your fist. 
and besides that it's not it's not that does not even come in because before fight night okay let's say at a weekend the fighters provide various gloves they provide various gloves let, let's remember the giant wilder uses the everlast ms and tyson fury use patterson sports glove but you but people happen to be interchanging them because in the first world wilder fury fight uh, fury war everlast um, uh, with the horse hair pattern so people are exchanging both gloves but you would see that the tapings that's for the first fight you'll see a red taping or a blue taping on both fighters but with the second fight you wouldn't and then with the first fight the referee was jack reese and with the second fight the referee was kenny billy so those are how you can spot the differences and their co uh, furious costume with the first and second fight seems to be similar so people easily get it confused so in nevada you provide various gloves but you provide the one you want to fight with with other backups then both corners or both fighters a, t a team member signs the glove then the glove is given to the commission then both fight both fighters will, will be asked when they will be gloved up when they are ready to glove up that is when the glove is brought back to them even with that there is always an opposition team member during the hand wraps in in the opposite teams so so wilder would have a person in tyson fury's dressing room so would tyson fury in with a commissioner of the nevada state athletic commission throughout so there'll be an there'll, there'll be a commissioner supervising and there would be a wilder team member supervising so they will go ahead wrap the hand and when it's time to glove up that then there, there would there would be a commission signature then the signed glove will be brought it would be worn in front of the commissioner and the opposition team member representative so when that is done it is laced it is laced taped and signed again so when you enter the ring the first thing the referee does is to check your glove that that's what happened when tyson fury because the referee checks the gloves when immediately yet that was why tyson fury's glove with christian hammer fight uh, which happened to be the final eliminator to face Vladimir Klitschko in 2017 was noticed with the with the thumb of the gloves being attached and uh, detached from the main glove he was asked to replace this to replace the glove and the replacement was was done with a glove which he had already provided as a backup so that is what happens you do you don't sign the glove and give it back to the person no it is kept by the regulatory body if it's in britain the british board of control if it's in new york the new york state athletic nevada texas that is how it is done all over the world if it's in ghana gba would keep the glove it is not given back to you so the, when the referee when you enter the referee will also check so there's no way you can cheat there's no room and people they, they happen to be saying in between rounds that was when the glove was pulled how can that that why is that not possible because despite someone being in your dressing room there is always someone from the athletic commission and the doctor in addition to your corner members in always in your corner they always enter the ring to 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 see if clearly something has been given to the fighter which should not be given to the fighter so i don't think i think the glove gate saga saga is just a sad loss just like uh sean potter said he doesn't take it as, as as possible because of the vigorous nature of the check i think the wilder fans are shocked by the flipping job was done by the likes of larry holmes the great ali himself also flicked his job 
it's not normal it's not common but only genesis does that so i think that's why most people who have not seen that before think he is cheating by but we all know Tyson Fury is awkward. Things you would normally do, he won't do it. He does things the other. So the awkwardness and the way he punched Rauda. Let's forget people with the there was other controversy that the the punter busted Wilder in the ear. That um that cuts his equilibrium was an illegal punch. Yes, the punch may have landed illegally, but but it wasn't thrown illegally. That means while when the punch left, Wada moved his head, so the target changed. So though it hit the back of his head, it wouldn't be de it wouldn't be deemed as an illegal punch. He wasn't sucker punch or rabbit's punch intentionally during a clutch. No, it was a punch that was moving. He dodged then it hit the back of his head. So. Whilst that was going on, talking about the Christian Hammer fight um, in 2017, before, before I continue, please remember to subscribe, like, and comment. Thank you. I think in 2017, as a final eliminator, Tyson Fury happened to have filled a drug test. He has filled, he, he, he filled a drug test for the final eliminator in which uh, the farmer Kerfoot said gave testimony that he gave while uh, Fury and his cousin, both of them for the Yucatas, he gave them Bobe, uh, Bobe, that was what increased a banned substance in, in them. Even with that, Fury was given a backdated ban. So that controversy, but now Fury has resigned Fury has not renewed his license with the British Board of Control so they can't investigate him besides Fury is no more fighting in Fury is no more fighting in the UK his contract with Top Rank and Bob Aram mandates him to fight in the US so he has not renewed his license for him to be a so it's a whole lot of controversies there and after that we are hearing that Excuse me. We are hearing that Wilder claims his his water has been dragged. I found that amazing or unbelievable. I don't believe it because before a fight, you would provide your urine sample. When you provide your urine sample before a fight, it, if you go to the ring, when you come back, you provide another urine sample. Anything that was in your urine before you went into the ring must be in your urine when you come back there must not be an addition you you have to take clean water you can't take this uh belacqua active or any kind of water like that no any water you drink must be a clean water so for him to have passed the vada test and he no no positive or banned substance has been found in his in his body shows that that was also not possible. Besides, he says he's adding two people to his team. There are rumor that it to be um, George Foreman. I don't know the other person, but I think it should be another coach in his corner. So these are some of the controversies that has happened between Wilder and Fury. The, after the bout, these are the controversies that are besides the step aside money. Fury saying he will not give Wilder a step aside money. He would like to beat him for the third time on a row because uh, third time, third time in court because Fury says he beat him the first time, which is not true. And the first fight was a draw. I think, though I think Fury, I think it was a being uh, ruling it as a draw was a fair judgment because Wilder knocked him down twice. And maybe if you turn some two close rounds in, in favor of Wilder, it could, it could easily be a draw. So these are some of the controversies between that, that has happened after the Wilder Fury 
to whilst we await the Wilder Fury period. So I'll keep updating you on all these. Thank you.